Hello everyone, my name is Nikki, and if you're a regular viewer of the TVR channel, you will know me as Mrs. TVI. I don't have a car or a GoPro, not yet, but I do have an interest in history, architecture and cemeteries. It's time to see where I am and what I'm getting up to in my corner of the TVR channel today. So you guys will know me by now if you've been watching Andy's channel for a while. I am Mrs. TVI or Nikki and uh, in a parish meeting uh, we were talking about what you guys would like to see a little bit of on the channel and the answer was me and uh, my sort of musings and you know historical and cemetery wanderings and that sort of thing so today I am bringing you the first in that series I am currently standing in Retford Cemetery I'm going to take a little walk and I'm going to pick up on some interesting places and points to note. Now, I won't be uh, investigating anything that's sort of a, a recent uh, burial because, you know, I don't think it's uh, appropriate, but I will be having a look at the history of this place and uh, looking at some of the older monuments here. So I can see in, in front of me at the moment a sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera around in a moment and give you guys a view of exactly what I see uh, rather than you know looking at my mug all the time but I'm currently stood in what the western side of Retford Cemetery it's the newer section and I can see a board in front of me and it gives me some information so I'm gonna have a look at that so stand by okay so as you come into the cemetery uh, past the Catholic Church just off the Babworth Road there is this main sort of cemetery sign which gives you uh, a little map and as you can see we are on the east side where the red dot is in the middle of your picture now and there is obviously quite a large east no not east west I told you it was early side of the cemetery there's a large section here and then there is the eastern section which is the older part uh, of this cemetery it was opened in 1854 uh, the first burial took place on the 24th of October, uh, to be precise. And the cost of the interment at that time was just six shillings or 30 pence in today's money. And given the funerary industry at the moment, that's not going to last now, is it? So, excuse the joddery shots. I don't have the luxury of the GoPro. It's just me and my phone. So I'm walking to the right hand side of that sign that we just passed. I'm going to give you a sweeping shot in a moment. But what you can see in front of you, there's a hedgerow there. And behind that is the Chesterfield Canal. But anyway, so this is a section here which is obviously still empty. So this cemetery still has lots of space. But as you can see, going around here, you can see... Um, up here there are some interments here and also along here so we're going to head up that way i'm going to follow this path and see what we can find uh, it's a sunday morning it's very quiet there's nobody else here i don't think the cemetery should technically be open until sort of nine and it's about half past seven um i'm staying in retford for other reasons i thought i'd pop out and and do this today. So I went to the first section of interments, I'm actually stood at the back of them because I don't think sort of with these newer ones it's very appropriate to show uh, you know the markings. It's It would still be very fresh and raw for these people uh, who've lost their loved ones but this is the sort of the newest sort of section. Lots of granite and polished headstones and more sort of in keeping with what we see and then just across there that's a cremation garden um, it, it's obviously been sort of you know fairly recent that, that this has been sort of used I would say within the last sort of 10 years there's another information board here I think it's just a map yeah 
Uh, it's sort of a map, it's like a war memorial. It's about remembering Retford's falling. So there's a guide here as to where that you will find the Commonwealth war graves, which is quite nice. It's something that we we do sort of look at at the, at the uh, on the channel. So it's got a key which has got the red dots, which are private graves or memorial or a Ministry of Defence grave and then the yellow dots which are the Commonwealth war graves. Okay so I've just passed through this section here which is another modern section. Um, lots again of black sort of black granite headstones. I've seen some of the Commonwealth war graves on the in-between. I've also seen a grave with Chinese scripture on it. Can you hear the birds? I'm now heading into the older section and the first one that strikes me is this one here. It's an iron headstone. Let's take a look. So this is for a young person who passed away nearly a hundred years ago. Age just 11, but isn't that an amazing marker there? And it looks like we have a Commonwealth War Grave here. We'll get up close with this one because there's nothing else around it. It's a member of the Royal Artillery, a GH Pass, a gunner. Look at them birds. And then here we have another patch of Commonwealth War Graves. Uh, okay, so I'm just in the top section of the western side of this cemetery and here we see a lot of the more, the larger Victorian Edwardian sort of monuments. Um, you know, they, they stand much, much taller than the, the sort of the granite headstones that we see. And if you look sort of here, you see this grave here is very tall and there's just a standard granite headstone there that backs onto it. So you can see just how much bigger, you know, the Victorians and the Edwardians were. Um, and, you know, not necessarily bigger is better, but as I said before, uh, a big funeral is a show of wealth and a surefire way of an, uh, of an ascent to heaven, um, in, you know, according to some of the Victorians. I have to give props to this cemetery because this part, obviously it's the oldest bit, there's lots of graves that are packed sort of fairly tightly together and they have infilled with newer interments. So there's not a bit of space that's been wasted, you know, but then, you know, you come across sort of things like this, a grave just literally on its own under a tree. There is a large baby garden here as well, which I've already passed. Um, and again, for obvious reasons, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, investigating that further. And here, look, gorgeous Celtic cross. There's a few of those knocking around in here. So I'm going to go across the other side and then I'm going to try and get in to the eastern side. So just before I go into or try to get into the eastern side, I've just been kind of distracted. Um, there's a couple of really nice sort of monuments on, still on this side. We've got this one here with a cross. And an angel and a little, little uh, oh, I can't speak this morning. <laughs> there are wrought iron works surrounding it there, which is something that's a very Victorian sort of thing to do. Let's see if I can get a date off this one. Oh. No, unfortunately, not. It's 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 very difficult to hear. Got another one here with a, an urn on top. The cloth over it, and that's a uh, quite a large obelisk there. And it seems to have stood the test of time. It's almost it's near vertical. This one, so that that's doing quite well. And the one at the back there as well. But then this one here, literally the writing has worn away. But look at this gorgeous, gorgeous design here with the rose in the middle of it. That's just beautiful. 
So to access the east side, there's a bridge here. It's over the Chesterfield Canal. So I just thought I'd uh, pause here because I've got sun just peeking through the trees. It's still early on a Sunday, it's about eight o'clock. It's like a tomb. And when you look down on the top, you can see it's laid out in a cross. And then we've got some family plots back here. And this one looks like that obelisk would have been sat on the top at one point, but unfortunately time has taken it down. Again, this one appears to have a bit of a shortfall. It looks like its cap has come off at some point. It's laid at the back, I can just see. And the writing's worn away. So you can see here, this is the east gate and it's now open. And then here, there's another section of markers and again there's a huge variety we've got some classic gravestones some celtic crosses some normal crosses or standard crosses however you want to put it and then we've got this monolith here which is a good two foot plus taller than i am and i'm nearly six foot looks like we'll have had some kind of fence around it possibly a protection for grave robbing um, I wouldn't have thought that that would have happened up here in uh, in Ratford, but you never know. A couple of matching ones there. Again, looks like family members. And then, you know, sadly, like I said, some of these are very hard to read. This one is another Victorian. 18, I think the date of death here is 1891 from the first... Uh, person interred. It looks like a private war grave there. You see the poppy and uh, the poppies on there. It's a poppy wreath. And an angel. Pyramid graves, I think, if my memory serves me right, I'm looking at this one here. Um, the Egyptians believed that pyramids sort of gave a direct path to heaven. Ah, this one was the daughter of a minister who was born in 1839 but then passed away in 1884. Fell asleep in Jesus. And then her sister. And then there's a, and of the Reverend John S. Jordan interred at Norton Lees. So there's also a memorial here to people who are buried elsewhere. The one thing that I haven't found, and I don't believe that there is any longer in this cemetery, is a chapel. Um, I think, according to, I did a Google last night on this cemetery, and it looks as though that the chapel was removed quite a while ago now, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so we don't get to see a funeral chapel today, but there will be other opportunities, I'm sure. And if you guys enjoy this video, um, I'll, uh, I'll do a few more. So here's another war grave. And again, it's really difficult to read. It looks like the Rev Reverend Eric Vivian Corland. I don't know if that's South or Smith. It's very hard to read, but just look at the uniqueness of it, that uh, wreath there on a shield. It's very nice. I've not seen that before. Thomas Rippingdale and his family. Mary, Sybil, Mary, Ernest, and another Ernest. Looks like Ernest was a popular name in this family. And Mary as well. This one, Joseph Henry Goodwin. Oh, there's a son on that side, wait a second. Are you ready? Born in 
that's got to be eight foot tall easily an eight foot tall how much of that you can see so William William Taylor of Retford and Mary she outlived him by some 18 years Let's give you another last look at these gorgeous monuments and then I am going to call it a day folks Hope you've enjoyed this I'm, I'm not used to this obviously I tend to be Andy's wingman and I don't have him here being mine but I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and if you do want me to do something like this again just let me know so I'll call it a day and I'll see you all soon bye for now